Hey, what is going on guys? This is Jason with Jadron Aquatics. Thanks for hanging out with me again. So today we are going to talk about small cichlids and cichlids that you can keep in smaller aquariums. Now when I say smaller aquariums, let's try to start with a 20. A 20 high or a 20 long, it's 20 bucks at Petco when they're on sale. You can do some of these pairs in a 10 gallon but it's really not the greatest idea. But one thing you need to keep in mind with all of these cichlid species, whenever you keep pairs together, male and female, and they start getting into breeding season or whenever they wanna breed, understand they can act a little nuts. They can start being extremely abusive to your other fish that are in the tank Fish are much like people, they have personalities. There are some that you can get that are absolutely wonderful when they breed and they never bother anything else. There are others of the exact same type of species that will murder everything in the tank after they lay eggs. So keep that in mind when you do this. Fish have personalities. All right, let's go around and let's find the five, five, Cichlids that you can keep in small aquariums. All right, the very first cichlid that we have on our list is the uh, curviceps. Uh, it's also known as the uh, dwarf flag cichlid or also the uh, dwarf flag acara. These guys are <clears throat> just highly personable fish. They're not, you know, your typical fish that are just scared and run all the time. These guys are always up front, always ready to uh, uh, accept food. They're just absolutely just fun to watch. And I just haven't seen a lot of people that, uh, that keep these fish. Uh, they typically live about uh, two to four years. Uh, they can be kept in uh, anywhere from six to 7.8 pH, and they can be kept between temperatures between 71 and 82 degrees. So these guys make an absolutely fantastic fish uh, to keep in a community setting. They are very, very docile. Again, when they, when they do get to breeding, they can become more aggressive as they, they guard their eggs, but for the most part, these fish are just very, very docile. Uh, these guys come from from uh, Brazil uh, in the uh, Amazon. And as far as feeding these guys, they'll take just about anything. Um, <clears throat> it's good though to mix it if you're using flake food also to give them some, uh, some cichlid pellets or uh, get them some uh, live food like some live brine shrimp or uh, some live blood worms. Uh, these guys grow to be uh, about four inches long. So uh, they're one of the bigger uh, dwarf cichlids. So again, if you're keeping a couple of these guys, you, you, you want at least a, a 20 gallon. But again, uh, these guys can be kept in a, a, a community tank. As you can see, they're, they're in a tank right now where there's a, uh, uh, some crebenzas and there's also some uh, uh, quarry cats and they just absolutely just leave everything alone. All right, the next fish on the list is the uh, crebenza or as they're just commonly known cribs. Some people call them rainbow cribs. Uh, the ones that you see here, these guys are actually uh, the albino version. There are a couple of just regular cribs there. You can see one uh, right there. These fish are just absolutely beautiful. I mean, if you want a lot of coloring in your tank, these guys are absolutely great to have. Another fish that's a, uh, a good community fish, um, for the most part, they don't typically pick on other fish, again, except when they get into, uh, into breeding. They typically stay low all the time, um, so it's better to have some other community fish that like to uh, stay high. But again, these fish are uh, a little bit more timid. They don't come out quite as much as some of the uh, other fish. Uh, they like to come out typically more when they feed, but they spend a lot of time in caves. Um, that's where they do uh, their breeding at, so you wanna be sure and provide uh, a lot of caves for them, give them a lot of plants, uh, some driftwood, just places where they can uh, hide and uh, feel safe. These guys will typically live about four to five years. And one of the things really good about cribs is they're really resilient to d disease. Um, might have something to do with just the fact they've been in the fish trade for so long, they've just become resilient to a lot of different types of diseases. Uh, the females usually max out at about three inches and the males can get about uh, four inches. These guys come from uh, West Africa. Um, Again, they do great on just about any type of food also, whether it's a, a flake food or 
um, some type of uh, cichlid pellets, but it's also really good to mix in some type of live food, whether that's uh, uh, Daphnia or brine shrimp, or uh, they really, really blood, you love blood worms, uh, and also black worms. Those work really good when you're trying to get them ready uh, to breed. And the temperature these guys stay at, again, is about 71 to 82 degrees. So again, uh, just really normal type community fish settings. Again, this is just, this is about one of the most beautiful fish uh, that there are when it comes to freshwater, if you ask me. All right, the next fish on the list that we're gonna talk about is the epistogramma. Uh, the epistogramma that you can see right here, this is an epistogramma agazizi. Uh, these guys come in a bunch of different colors and different patterns. Again, it's just an absolutely just beautiful, uh, beautiful fish. Uh, this is a, another a dwarf cichlid. Um, these guys have uh, tons of personality. Uh, these guys love to stay right up in the front of the tank. They'll become one of your favorite fish um, because they love to see what it is that you're doing. These guys are a decent community fish, but they will eat um, other fish that will uh, fit in their mouths. Um, this right here, these are uh, cockatoides. Again, you can see they look a lot different than the last ones, but they've got just beautiful, beautiful coloring. As you can see, this male just has this gorgeous uh, orange colored on him. And again, uh, just, just personable fish. And here you can see this is the female. The female doesn't quite have the, the beautiful color pattern. She has more of kind of a, a, a common color. Uh, these guys, these guys usually max out at about three to three and a half inches. Uh, they're keeping a pretty wide range of pH from about six to 7.8 and temperature from about 72 uh, to 86 degrees. Here you'll see these are some more Apistos. These are the Vieta uh, Golds. Again, just absolutely just beautiful, beautiful colors. Now the Apistos will eat just about anything also. Uh, they love all types of flake foods and pellets, but again, it's really good to mix up some uh, live foods for them, whether it's uh, blood worms or brine shrimp or, or black worms. These guys will absolutely, just absolutely enjoy it. There you can see that's the uh, female version of it. But a pistogramma is just a, a, a fish I've grown to absolutely love and currently have about five or six different kinds now. Next fish that we have on the list are the uh, Tilmatochromus temporalis. Uh, these guys are sometimes known as shell dwellers, but in reality, they're just shell broaders. They don't actually live uh, in the shells. They just like to have their babies. As you can see, we've got some uh, bigger shells in here and there's a bunch in the back. Uh, so that these guys can breed. These are these guys are just highly personable fish. Now, granted, they are very skittish. Um, if I move towards the tank too fast, every single one of these guys will dive down into the rocks. Uh, but when you look at their faces, they just have they just have a tremendous amount of personality. Uh, well, my wife thinks they look dumb. <laughs> she says if you look up in the face, they just look like they're absolutely clueless. I, for one, I think they're extremely cute. Now, uh, these are some uh, Lake Tanganyikan uh, dwarf cichlids. Uh, these guys uh, are a lot more aggressive than the other fish that I've shown before. Um, if you're gonna keep these guys in a smaller tank, you need to only keep a pair. Uh, as you can see, I have quite a few of these guys in here. I've got them in a 40 gallon breeder, uh, but I've got enough so it disperses the aggression out and they've got plenty of places to hide. You have to keep a bunch of rocks, a bunch of caves, um, just a bunch of different places where these guys uh, can get away. These guys uh, typically live in the bottom. So you'll, as you can see here, you'll see none of them up at the uh, upper levels. So if you wanna keep them in some type of community type tank, um, it's good to have some type of dither fish, uh, some bigger fish that they can't get in their mouth that stay up at the top of the tank all the time. Uh, it'll allow these guys to come out a lot more. That's something I'm gonna do. I just haven't decided uh, what I'm gonna put in here yet. But again, it needs to be some type of uh, bigger fish that these guys won't try to eat because pretty much anything they can get in their mouth, um, they're gonna try to eat. Uh, the ones you see in here are about the biggest size they get. They're about two inches. They're from a typical higher pH, so it's better to keep these guys on crushed coral. As you can see, that's what the entire substrate in these is. Um, I have a friend that breeds these things and he keeps them in just pretty much regular tap water. Um, so his have gotten very used to uh, not having such a high pH, but they typically come from about um, 8.5 to 9 pH. 
and their temperature, they like it a little bit hotter from about 77 uh, to 79 degrees. Last but not least, we have the uh, German Blue Rams, the Ram that you're actually looking at here. This is an electric blue version of it. These guys come in a, a lot of different colors also, uh, but these guys are just extremely beautiful also. Now, these, are, these guys are small enough that you can keep a pair of these uh, easily in a 10-gallon aquarium. Um, they do very, very well. Uh, uh, again, uh, just a pair, I wouldn't put any more than that because um, you need to provide a lot of hiding for them to be able to get away because they can become a little bit aggressive uh, during uh, breeding times. These guys will typically live about two to four years. Uh, they typically max out at about uh, two to three inches in size. Uh, these guys love plants and love driftwood, so it's good to have a heavily planted tank with some uh, driftwood. Um, these guys, whenever they uh, lay eggs, they like to lay it on flat surfaces and sometimes kind of small caves. So it's good to provide them some surface where they can begin to uh, uh, clean off and begin to prepare where they're going to uh, lay their eggs at. Um, again, this is another great community fish. It can be kept with just about anything that it can't get into its uh, own mouth. Um, it, it temperatures anywhere from 78 to 85. Um, this is typically a fish that likes it warmer when it does want to breed. So, you know, 83, 84, whenever you're trying to uh, get them to breed. All right, there you go. There are five amazing cichlids that you can get for the small aquarium. Uh, you want to be sure and check these guys out. It's just uh, awesome to uh, be able to keep these things. Uh, at first, when I got into the hobby, um, I didn't like the idea of any type of cichlid. Um, they just seemed like they were just way too aggressive for me. Um, but I didn't realize there were a lot of these dwarf and Central American cichlids. Um, that are just great fish to have. Even when it, the, a fish not even listed here is the angelfish, but an angelfish is another great fish to have. It's just a little bit bigger, so it needs to have a, a bigger aquarium, but I didn't realize when I first got in the hobby that an angelfish was actually a cichlid because I had this misnomer in my head of what a cichlid actually was. So if you guys got any questions or comments, be sure and down, leave them down below. Tell me what is your favorite small cichlid? What cichlid did I leave out that would do great in a small aquarium? Love to hear from you guys. So thanks again, guys, and God bless.